Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Member of Parliament for the riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Trudeau's failure to secure vaccines has become an international embarrassment. On Monday night, Canada's vaccine rollout failure was highlighted on the international stage. CNN reported, quote, some bad news for our neighbors to the north. Canada is now outpacing the United States in terms of coronavirus cases per capita. The Canadian vaccine rollout is not going well at all, unquote. CNN host Jake Tapper said, Canadians deserve better. Trudeau's response was to call CNN fake news. When asked if he had any regrets, Trudeau said no. He claimed he'd been doing all he could since last summer to secure vaccines. Trudeau hopes you forgot the pandemic started last winter, not last summer. He hopes you forgot his failed plan to partner with the communist Chinese government to secure a single vaccine. Trudeau's clearly trying to fool Canadians because that bad China deal was struck last spring before his special vaccine advisory committee even existed. It's just like the SNC-Lavalin scandal. When confronted with the truth, Trudeau lied and called it fake news. So Trudeau's failure has hurt Canadians, Canada's reputation. But what other people think of us is not what matters most to my constituents. What matters is getting willing Canadians fully vaccinated. Trudeau's failure has resulted in Canada being the only country to ignore the science and extend the gap between receiving the second dose from the first dose. And the time gap was supposed to be three weeks, but he's changed it from three weeks to four months. Now, New Brunswick has three people who have received their first dose being hospitalized with COVID-19. Trudeau's failure is putting people into hospitals and worse. The Liberals have never gotten their priorities straight. In January, after it had been announced the government would vaccinate 600 elderly prisoners, I asked why they weren't offering the vaccine to soldiers being deployed to Latvia. In order to grow old in a federal prison, you have to commit serious crimes. Yet the soldiers who were being deployed to a COVID hotspot would be required to live and sleep in communal barracks. It was obvious they were at higher risk, but they were sent abroad without being protected anyhow. Sure enough, Uh, Many of them contracted COVID-19. This week, I raised the issue again in Parliament. The Liberal response was to lie and cover up the truth. Nearly 1,300 members of the Canadian Forces have tested positive for COVID. I know this because the Government of Canada published the number online. As of April 5th, the number was exactly 1,000. 271. The liberal response to my speech was to claim the number was fake news. Take a look. In, uh, regarding the, my honourable member opposite cited a figure in terms of the um, numbers of COVID-19 within the Canadian Armed Forces and uh, the figure that she cited is nowhere near accurate. Um- She's the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Defence and even she doesn't Forces know the number are aware has been that published some online. Members. She tried to claim the number of members was a national security secret. 
forces are aware that some members deployed on Operation Reassurance in Latvia had tested positive for COVID-19. For operational security reasons, specific numbers of affected members will not be released. They're trying to claim national security to avoid accountability, just like they do on any answer they don't want to give. How incompetent and unaccountable can one government possibly be? Speaking of the Parliamentary Secretary of National Defense and unaccountability, on Monday, she got the separatist party to join with the liberals to shut down the investigation into sexual misconduct at the very top of the Canadian forces. The committee investigation has revealed the Minister of Defense had abdicated his responsibility. He claimed it wasn't his job to protect the integrity of the Office of the Chief of Defense Staff. He blamed the failure to follow up on everyone but himself. He blamed the ombudsman who tried to report it to him. He blamed the public servants for not investigating. He claimed he handed the matter off to his staff. So we asked to interview his staff. The minister refused to let them testify. He said he was responsible for his staff. He just was not going to actually take any responsibility. Recall that when the we, the public, first learned about the accusations of sexual misconduct against the former chief of defense staff, Sajin and Trudeau said they were shocked. This was the first they'd heard of it. That was a lie. They had always known. But when confronted with the truth and asked to take responsibility, they called it fake news. The Trudeau liberals have become so radicalized, they're starting to make the natural law party look rational. The latest fashion amongst these woke liberals is to find discrimination everywhere. Apparently, asking job applicants if they have a criminal record is a form of discrimination. Clearly, liberals who do not believe they're responsible for anything they do or fail to do think the same way about criminals as they do about themselves. No employer should be allowed to discriminate against you for the way you look or the way you love. But nobody was born a bank robber. That's a choice people make. Now liberals want to tell the banks they cannot discriminate between people who rob banks and people who do not rob banks. Only in liberal Canada is it wrong to run a criminal background check on uh, criminals, but lawful firearms owners face criminal background checks daily. Liberals really believe that firearms owners are inherently dangerous. Even wanting to possess a firearm makes you a deviant in their minds. They view firearms owners as fake Canadians. Unless you actually commit a crime using a firearm, then you're a victim of society. What's most troubling is many centrist, moderate Canadians who would recoil at such a policy will be tricked into thinking it's not true. I still receive emails from people who think the Liberals are not planning on decriminalizing all hard drugs for possession. We must do everything we can to educate Canadians. So please share this video. This week, the federal government finally published the regulations required to make the Disability Tax Credit Promoters Restrictions Act a reality. 
As many of you know, I first introduced the Disability Tax Credit Promoters Restriction Act back in 2012. The goal was to, uh, the goal of the bill was to cap the fees companies can charge for helping to complete a single form. Many Canadians living with disabilities were being charged fees as high as 40% of a claim. Some companies even continue to take a portion of future benefits. I first learned about these companies when they began targeting soldiers in Petawawa suffering from PTSD. The bill was quickly passed into law with all party support. All that was left was for the CRA to hold consultations and set the fee regulations. Unfortunately, Trudeau won the 2015 election, and even though the bill received unanimous approval and royal assent, the Liberals refused to implement the law. This week, after seven years of resistance, the regulations have finally been officially published. Promoters cannot charge more than $100 for assisting a person with a disability tax credit form. Sadly, thousands of Canadians likely lost out on millions of dollars while the Liberals caved to the lobbyists for those companies who prey on the disabled. Liberal indifference for people living with disabilities was evident when they rushed money out the door to we charity, but took months and months to send a single $600 check to persons living with disabilities. For Liberals, the priority was passing the assisted suicide bill, which every advocacy group for persons with disabilities said was horrible. If you're living with a disability, the Liberals will make you wait for help and support, but are all too happy to assist you in getting access to suicide. Tomorrow is the funeral of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, a loyal, steadfast companion to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As a young cadet, I received the Duke of Edinburgh's Gold Award for volunteerism and service. And receiving that award from Prince Philip encouraged me to dedicate myself to public service. Sadly, the Liberals don't wish to inspire community service, celebrate volunteerism, or even acknowledge Canada's history. The Trudeaus have a long history of disrespect for Queen Elizabeth. From Pierre Trudeau dancing behind her back or Justin taking down her portraits as soon as he became prime minister, their disdain is clear for all to see. That's why the Liberals are not celebrating the 70th anniversary of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Canada has always celebrated the anniversary of the king or queen's coronation with a medal. These medals are typically given to citizens who have been of service to their community. That is, until Trudeau. The Liberals do not believe in rewarding community service and volunteerism. After all, for Liberals, if something is worth doing, it's worth paying a bureaucrat to do it, or a political benefactor. Volunteers have the unfortunate effect of reminding people we don't need to rely on a, a massive nanny state from cradle to grave. The last thing liberals want to do is honor people who demonstrate independence from big government. Trudeau demonstrated his lack of respect for the role of the monarchy when he appointed Julie Payette to be governor general. For the liberals, it was all just an opportunity to virtue signal and nothing to consider seriously. Now, 
we find ourselves in a minority parliament in the middle of a pandemic without a legitimate governor general. This is what happens when liberals disrespect our constitution and our history. One constituent of mine was so upset about Trudeau's disrespect of tradition and history, he prepared a petition, which I was pleased to sponsor. The petition calls on the government to respect our history, respect tradition, and issue a Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medal. Countless Canadians have made tremendous sacrifices or displayed heroic levels of public service during the pandemic. Surely we could honor them with a medal. Please sign the e-petition. I put the link in the description. Let's honor the life of Prince Philip and the love he had for our queen by celebrating the duty and service they both exemplify. This is Cheryl Gallant, wishing you a good night.